Hello and welcome to this session of Talking Tech, Women and Girls in ICT. My name is Tejasvi and I am delighted to be having a discussion about tech and tech careers with our interviewee, Ms. Norwen German. This Talking in Tech series is about women and girls in tech, uh, which is being recorded between ICT 2020 and Girls in ICT 2022. The Girls in ICD Day is an international day marked on fourth Thursday of each April. The objective is to help a global environment that encourages young women to consider studies and career in the field of ICT. Today's Talking Tech series is brought to you by ITU, UNICC, and the Office of the UN Secretary General's Envoy on Youth, and is in support of Equal, the Global Partnership for Gender Equality in Digital Age. Thank you so much today for joining with me, uh, Ms. Nolwen. And to kick things off, would you like to introduce yourself to our lovely audience? And then we can proceed with the interview questions. Yes, of course. Thanks a lot, Tejizoui, for this interview. I am very honored to be with you for this event today and uh, to give you an overview about my career and how the tech sector is very attractive and especially for women. It is an honor. Right, so I suppose we can start with the first question. I'm pretty sure our audience are dying to hear about your career and how you've reached where you are of today. So how did you exactly get into this field of technology? Would you, give, would you provide us with the background, please? Yeah, I can. So first of all, I have to explain how I arrived in this tech sector and why I decided to study uh, this area. So when I was a girl, um, for me, energy access was a fundamental right, to be fair. And I was also a godmother of a girl in Bolivia to have energy access and to go to school, because for me, it was two things already very important when I was young. And during my reflection when I was 15, I said, what I would like to do in the future. And for me, energy access, I explained, is very pertinent. So I would like to develop that for everybody. So I wanted to go to hydroelectricity. So when I had to decide what I have to do, so I say, okay, I love hydroelectricity. For me, it's very important. So it is into the connection of all of my uh, subjects, which I love. So I do a bachelor, an electrical engineering bachelor. Mm -hmm. And then I decided to move a business school to have the global overview on how we manage the development of hydroelectricity. And to be fair, that it is how I arrive in the tech sector, but it is the start of the beginning of my career. Mm -hmm. So I think it was your second question, but uh, maybe I can explain how that, if it's okay for you. Yeah, 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 please go yeah. on, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, so during my school, uh, I arrived in data center market as an apprenticeship. Mm -hmm. And I realized that data center market is very important. So now everybody knows what it is a data center, or um, maybe not, because sometimes we use cloud, but what is exactly the cloud is behind data center. And in this way, it changed my vision. It's not only uh, energy access, it's also, also energy efficiency. So I increased my mind about, okay, that is very important energy access, but how we use the energy is very important too. So I moved my career in this area, energy efficiency and sustainability. So um, that's why I worked for 13 years for Schneider Electric uh, as a business developer, but also in marketing area, uh, open to launch new product. So when I arrived in marketing, I was only in one country. So it was only the launch of new product, which was developed by my business unit. But then I moved in the European area and international area in this company. And in this way, it was possible for me to launch new product who have a real impact on energy efficiency and sustainability. So that is very interesting to be as a interconnections with all the people and especially engineering, R&D, communications. So um, when you are uh, like me, 
so technical background and a business background is very helpful because you can speak with every team and read the standards, norms, laws of so different area. And after that, um, after 13 years, I wanted to, to grow up personally uh, as everybody. So I moved my career and I, did, I go back to school, to be fair. Okay. Yeah, I go back to school uh, because um, I wanted to learn um, how we learn. So that it is uh, something and many things around learn by playing. Mm-hmm. And how we will use VR because we are at the beginning, not the beginning, but it is the first discussion about how we will integrate real virtual reality in the communication, in marketing with the customer. So before to do anything in this area, I would like to more understand okay, how we learn by playing. So I did this uh, background. So I was a, I received my diploma from the university, French university. And then I moved a company where I can use and de- deploy this approach. So I still, it was a tech company to be fair, industry and automotive area. Mm-hmm. And I use this approach about a serious game and how we learn tomorrow and how we can be better in the company. Mm-hmm. And after that, because I have in my mind some idea about what I would like to do in the future, and I wanted exactly what I know to be fair, what I would like to do, I decided to move in SaaS company. Mm-hmm. So, you know, so that energy efficiency and then learn by playing. And then, okay, it means something to SaaS uh, business. How? The SaaS system and SaaS area is uh, working. So I moved in SaaS company and during uh, less than one year. And in parallel, to be fair, uh, I was a chief uh, marketing officer for a sustainable FinTech. So it is a FinTech was dedicated for SDG. So because for me, it's very important. So after all of that, so at the beginning, it was energy access, energy efficiency, and then love by the playing, main thing around finance. I say, okay, so it's a global interconnections and I stay in tech. And in this way, I decided to create my own company, mm-hmm. which is a consult- international consulting firm in strategy and innovations. Mm-hmm. So that it is, yes, my background can say that, but it is, yes, uh, where I am today. Now I am my own uh, boss, if you can say that. But uh, yeah, it was a long time in very interesting area and meet so many great people and helped me also to be who I am today, to be fair. You've had a very interesting long journey. Uh, you've, you've had what, about 15 years of this long journey to get where you are today. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's impressive considering how you did not give up. A lot of us would have probably felt, ah, oh, it's, it's too much, you know, it's, it's too difficult, but it's, it's good to see that you've struggled through and now you are your own boss, like you said, yeah. and, and you are doing what you love. So that's, that's beautiful to hear. So now that you've talked about your background, um, how from uh, business, now you've gone towards merging with uh, technology. So with your 15 years of um, background in this field, how do you, how how would you say that the the field of technology has evolved from then to now? What what do you see the difference? Yes, there's a difference. To be fair, uh, the main difference for me, to be fair, there are more women in tech sector. Even if uh, I read some studies where we less than thirty percent in this area, but uh, I realize the evolutions, the main evolutions of people about yes. It's not because a woman, she's not uh, at the same level as a man. And that is good to be fair, to see more women in this area. But uh, in the same time, it's still, sometimes you can be struggle to be fair about the situation because yes, we are more women, but uh, we are still not many women. We are not on the parity to be fair in this sector today. So many times, to be fair, in my company, but also with, my, with the customer of the company, many times I was the only woman uh, in, the, in the meeting. And when sometimes it's very funny, it is 
uh, I remember, I will give you an example. Um, I was with a business developer of the company and we discussed, it was in marine sector. And it, this uh, customer, it, he worked with our competitive competitors. So the idea is me as an expert of the product to explain why it would be interesting to work with us and not with our competitors. And I arrived in the customer area and in the, his headquarters in RAD. So only men, 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 men. It was so incredible to see so men, so many men. And arrived in the meeting room. So me, I sit at the table, something like that. Good. And the business developer of the company say, okay, it is not one. She's an expert of the product, so she will do a presentation. And at the beginning, the customer say, yes, yeah, something, a short reaction to the, you see? I say, yes, I am the expert. So it was very funny. It's not, because because for him, it was not, a, because I'm a woman, uh, it was not a very uh, often you see women as an expert in this area. So, but before to start my presentations, to be fair, I prepare myself. I prepare myself and I do many things and many research about the customer. And I discover their visions about the future and the perspective of marine sector. Mm -hmm. And I discuss first, before to do my presentation, I discuss about his visions. And I take time to understand, okay, what are your customer needs? What are your visions about the future? And then the guy, you realize, okay, she's a professional woman. She's not a stupid lady and okay. And then I, can, I do my presentation, I change my presentation to be fair when I do the presentation of the product. And then the customer, he has already directly contact with me. He sent me some email to have more details about the technical approach. However, I was not a technical lady, I was marketing. But when you're in marketing, it's not you're in marketing, you are not technique. So um, me, I are very important. And now the customer works uh, with the company. But yes, the first time I arrived and the guy saw me say, okay, <laughs> she, she's her the expert, yes, it's me. So yeah, but um, all the time we have that, unfortunately, uh, even if we're in 2022, it's just take time to change uh, the mindset of people. But to be fair, there is more women uh, today in this sector. Mm -hmm. Not enough, but uh, step by step, you know, so yeah. One step at a time. Exactly. <laughs> so, so now that we've talked about, oh, I, I know we've talked a bit about your background. Yeah. Uh, what does your uh, job in technology involve currently? Yeah, so currently because I am my own boss. So what I do, it is I support my customer in the transition we live. So my point of view, there are three transitions. Okay, the first it is the economic transitions based on the technology evolutions. Mm -hmm. So we are more and more AI, we are more and more machine learning in our business, so many things like that. So it means for our first for any companies to change the mindset about what is a product and how do more business and how also they can be more innovate is I can do more innovations because if you are not an innovative company, in the future, you will, you will disappear, to be fair. It is what has happened for Kodak, for example. They forgot to do the digital break and now the Kodak doesn't exist. So that it is the first transition I had my customer, to be fair. So open their mind, do some more shock about innovations and remind them that we need diverse team in the innovation area, not only men, not only women, but very diverse profile. So also people who have disabilities who are very important for me. So that is, is the first pillar. The second pillar, which I do with my customer, it is to help them in the sustainability approach. So all things around ecology. Mm -hmm. And many of them that don't know SDG. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, because now it's a long time SDG exists, but it is how they implement the SDG in the strategy and the communication also. And the last one, which is a huge, uh, it is the social transitions and social okay. transitions. Um, 
because as I said, now we have uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence. So our job will change, of course. So it is how the company and will um, add their own employees to learn something. So the idea when I work with my customer, it is becoming a learning company. That is very important. Yeah. So that it is what I do with my customer today. Very interesting, though, how you have involved AI and technology and all this. Um, I have never seen any other woman company doing this. So very interesting. So given the fact that you've done all this, uh, what what do you think are your two uh, two achievements you've considered that you're very proud uh, so far? Um, would you mind sharing any two examples that you have? Yeah, of course. I would take one example to be fair, and that too, um, because it is the best I prefer to be fair. Okay. So um, I work in the um, electrical market, okay, electrical car, electric vehicle, sorry. And it was in 2012. So in 2012, so now many people know what it is an uh, electrical vehicle and many things and how we use it and how we charge it, to be fair. But in 2012, to be fair, the standard was not real. So it is a lump balance, there is no global view. So me, I am in charge at this time, I am in charge of the, the launch of charging stations oh, in wow. Europe for her parking area. So now at home, because at home is more or less easy to be fair. But uh, when you go to your supermarket, so how you would charge you? So that is, is not the same approach and not the same product as a product in your home. So it was very interesting because, you know, you work with a team like a startup. It was very fun. So because you have to be very flexible in your brain, imagine new things, and at the same time, the standard is not okay now. So we have two standards, to be fair, to charge uh, really mm -hmm. German and French standards. So it okay. means in the factory, you have two lines of productions, okay? Yeah, so yeah. many action in Europe. So my company work with the European Parliament to do lobbying and to promote the French visions of the socket, to be fair. And German do exactly the same. The Germany do exactly the same. At the end, it was a German vision who wins to a fair. So okay. it means for us, okay, so now we should have only one line of production. And then it was very interesting to say, okay, but we have already charging station installed outside and the customers who are not the right cable. So how we do that? So it means develop a specific socket outlet to change the socket outlet. So it was very interesting because when you create a new product with your team, so R&D, uh, quality, chief engineer, uh, very interesting. You have to think about, okay, the product at the beginning, but you have also to remind that the repair approach, but also the recycling approach. So all things globally. So it's very eco-design approach the reuse, the recycling, and the using. And that is was very interesting because we launched a product in 18 months. Oh, wow. Only. And that was, it was very nice because to be fair, in an in international company, listed company generally, to launch a new product, you need three or five years. Oh, wow. So, yes. So that was <laughs> oh very God. much. And we follow exactly, exactly the same process. Because sometimes people imagine, okay, you are started mindset, so you will forget some process. No, 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 no. You follow the process, the official process. It is the same. It is very hard. It is very uh, passionate. So we are a very passionate team, to be fair. So, but very important. And for me, it gave me, when I discuss about energy efficiency, it was a global vision also, because with how you will connect you with the building. So the charging station, the building, or uh, the charging station directly to the grid, okay? So many reflection about how the future will be for city. 
So smart cities, smart building, and also do the internet interconnection and the cloud to have supervisions about the conception, how you, when you have, I don't know, 10 electrical vehicles, how you manage that? Because maybe you don't have enough energy. Mm -hmm. So how you manage that, so load shedding. So very, very interesting area and increase also your mind about um, technical evolutions. So battery. So if you don't have the battery for electric vehicle, there's no electric vehicle. So you have to have a vision also and keep in mind in your mind that, okay, what will be the evolution of battery area? So for me, to be fair, my career, it was the best uh, moment of my career because you are the beginning of a new revolutions of electrifications. So yes, you're one of the person who developed this new product, which now many people, you, me, we know that and when discuss about charging station, it's okay. But 10 years ago, it was not really okay. So that is very interesting to be, yes, at the beginning of a new product and a revolution. So you're one of those first pioneer, the first person to come up with this. It's, it's a proud achievement. Yeah, 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 that is very nice. It was a huge opportunity and I take it to be fair and say, okay, go. Even if somebody went to be fair and the company told me, no, no, you are going to the crazy team. No, no, we are not crazy. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, no, but it was very interesting for me because you open your minds about difficulties. You open your mind about uh, the difference between our country because me, I was in charge in Europe. So also um, you have to explain to your colleague in different Europe, okay, you have to consider my product. But in their p &L, it was nothing to be fair. So you have to convince them and to, to keep your mind that, and to be convinced. You have to be convinced that it is the best solution for the future and it is the way we are going. And today, everybody knows that more, we have more and more to be equal. So mm -hmm. that is good. And I have another example. Um, it is linked also. After, and then after this uh, time, I move in UK and I come back in Europe, in France. And at this time, okay, I discuss, uh, I am in charge of the marketing also, but international approach. Um, and I discuss with the guys, so we stop to speak about only electric vehicle. Mm -hmm. So uh, I uh, support my visions. And it was very now lovely because when 2022 now and it's still this vision in this company and start to discuss about electric vehicle, but now speak about e-mobility. And okay. that it is another approach for me where I'm very proud to be fair. It is okay. It's not only vehicle, your vehicle, because it is all thing about electrifications. So boat, plane, scooter, many things. And that is increase your mind at the same time about what are the stacks of tomorrow and all things around the transport and the mobility approach and how we include that in the global, global view. So yes, yeah, so that is the other thing I am very proud. It is change the mindset of my boss, to be fair, <laughs> to say, <laughs> to say not to speak only vehicles and not only vehicles in the transport area, so yes, it was very, very uh, lovely time for me too. That's wonderful to hear. Uh, seriously, that is wonderful to hear. And I hope this motivates our young audience as well to, to, to pursue something inspirational like yourself and to think outside the box and be creative to find solutions to the problems. So now what plans or next steps do you have in uh, tech or are there any projects that you are currently taking on yeah, yeah. so i have plenty of projects you can imagine but i will share uh, some with you first because i am my own company it is to support my customer in their development and international area mm -hmm. and me i will and me i will need a team with me i can't do that on myself, only me. So I am going to recruit some people in different areas because I want to be closest 
to the customer needs. Mm -hmm. So I will, my ambition it is to have a, a subsidiary in our five continents. So oh, because, oh. yes, because the customer needs is different than when you are in China, then compared when you are in France or in Nepal or in Bolivia or in Canada or in South Africa. So the customer needs is different and the world visions is different. So if you want to really close with your customer and understand their visions, we have to be local for me. So that it is the ambition of um, my company. Mm -hmm. And then also, um, because I'm engaged on SDG and I am a member of an international uh, NGO, so I would like to have some projects. So I have some projects to be fair with a Nepalese architect. So to, to create new school in Nepal. And I have another project also with a film director, American film director. Um, oh, this, yes, yes. Um, she did a beautiful uh, film in area about the gender bias to be fair. So we are on discussion uh, with her about one project. And my long-term view about my next, but a long-term view, okay? Um, <laughs> it is uh, to become a recognized uh, international speaker in energy, of course, uh, because it is my expertise, but also in innovations and blockchain area, because my vision, it is a blockchain technology, we change our approach about how we do contract, our, our relations between company and suppliers and customer. So that, so, but that it is a long-term view. So yeah, so first it is support my customer with a team, be in our five continents, and carry on uh, my action on SDG with my friends, uh, who are film director and most of friend in architect. You have a very uh, broad, massive uh, portfolio. You, you, <laughs> it, it, you, you're not just only focusing on uh, tech sector, but you're also moving forward. This, this plan that you have with like getting involved with the five continents, that is very big, like that is massive. And, and as a woman to another woman, I am very happy and proud to hear such things that you're undertaking. Um, also good to see that you are helping underprivileged children in Nepal, providing them with ed education and you are sort of propelling gender equality, SDG 5, SDG 10, um, beautiful work there. And you all, you're also working with American uh, film directors and producers. You, uh, you are a very, very well, how, how should I say, it? an inspirational woman here. So now that you talked about um, work in Nepal, uh, SDG, so you focus on SDG 5 and SDG 10, right? Gender equality and reduced inequality. Um, so how have you been able to gap uh, or bridge the gap between SDG 5, 10, and the tech? How are you using technology in here? Would yes. you, would you mind? Yeah, yeah. But so first of all, technology is linked uh, today already. For example, uh, we discuss, to be fair. So without technology, it would be not possible to discuss with you. And People should know that the Wi-Fi, who creates the Wi-Fi, it is a woman. So it's very important to know that it is Eddie Lamar. And the first computing person, the first person who computing program, it was also a woman, to be fair. So first, it is something I would like to highlight because we forget sometimes that technology and especially tech sector and all things on digital sector, women, we have our place, to be fair. So regarding SDG 5 and SDG 10 for me, as I explained, it's very important for me. And many think it is around also SDG 4 because it is education. Sometimes yes. people think education is only for children, but no, education is for everybody. And especially what explained United Nations in SDG 4, it is a lifelong learning. So how we learn, all the time we learn something, not only at school, you learn all the time. So me, uh, how I work, so I explain, I am a member of an international NGO who are specialized on SDG 5, to be fair, and we have ECOSOC accreditations. 
So we are in different area in United Nations. And me, um, in this association, I was a VP of Young, to be fair. So it means I support young members to, take, to have more confidence in self, to be more, um, how can I say that? To ask their brain about the bias, to be fair. Because even if, even me, me, sometimes I was okay, no, no, when you have a bias in your mind because you think it's not possible. I said, why is it not possible? So it's very mm -hmm. important to ask your brain. So what I do, to be fair, so I like a mentor. I like a mentor of women, fancy women, to be fair, and some women who create their own startup because we realize that in startup area, um, investment in women who create their startup from, from venture capital, it is only 5% in Europe. So only, only 5% of the money goes to the startup led by a woman in Europe. So that's why for me it's very important to speak with a woman, say, okay, well, girls, you can do it, okay? Do it, try, but also discuss with all venture capital about their bias. Because many of them, sometimes I would like to change the world. I said, okay, guy, I'm aligned with you, but if you want to change the world, you have also to change your brain sometime and to realize that you have gender bias. Mm -hmm. And just first at the beginning, you have to recognize it, and that is part. So it is what I do, and um, with my customer, but also during different workshops, not only with women, mm -hmm. and and as a mentor also. As a mentor, it's very important for me to take time. So this week, I discussed with a woman who is um, in in Nairobi. So she's based in Nairobi, and she's on blockchain area, and we discuss about her project on NFT. So and how we discuss about that and metaverse. So, but I take my time. It was not paid to be fair. So yes, so how I work for SD5, SD10, it is become a mentor to be fair about people who are un unprivileged, if I can say that, but it's not the reality. There are rich people and there are amazing people and mentor also from people from village and not only for people who live in the city and also do workshop about public speaking, about gender bias, uh, and also finance uh, literacy, because what is very important it is to understand finance. To be free, completely free, you should earn your own money. Yes. My perception visions. And to earn your own money, you have to understand how the finance is working. So it is different action I do. And fortunately, uh, I have my friends and they help me sometimes when I want to create workshops, they help me to in the communications and they can do that. So yes, so that is important for me. It is what I try to do, to be fair. I'm not a perfect lady. <laughs> <laughs> I am not a perfect lady, but uh, I think we are very few time in our planet, to be fair. And I would like just to people stay who they are or become who they are concretely and pursue their dreams and ambitions, whatever the gender, whatever the race, whatever the color, whatever the religions. So you want to do that? Okay, do it. Try, try all the time. You have to try. Yeah, yeah, fair point. We have to try. Uh, but thank you for such a concrete explanation on how you are combining tech with SDG, not just five and 10, but also four. Um, mm. That was very well explained. Thank you very much for that. So now I have another question for you. Um, I am sure there are many in the audience, there are many of them who would would like to listen to what were the challenges as a woman you faced uh, when you had to get in this field of technology? Yeah, so that is true. I can't say it's a perfect word. It's impossible to be fair. Um, but the first challenge, maybe there's more uh, remarks about sexist remarks, to be fair, in this area. Mm -hmm. um, my idea is just to ignore it, to be fair. All the time I ignore it. And give you one example. One day uh, I saw a dress, like today, a red dress, and I put, I have no makeup. 
And the guy is not many times I go to uh, with a dress uh, at work. Now it's okay. But when I was young, uh, I was not enough confident in myself to put some dress at work because it was a mad predominated area. And when I, I, I was dressed and no makeup, and the guy told me, oh, no, no, and you would be a real beautiful woman if you would put on makeup. And I go I carry on my way, to be fair. <laughs> I have no makeup, I'm not a beautiful lady. And now you told me I have a beautiful lady because I have a dress. So what does it mean? It means when I have a pant, I am not beautiful. And me personally, I don't take care about how if you put a skirt, a pant, I don't care about it. So why you told me now, this day, because I have a dress, I am a beautiful lady. So it was so strange. So I decided to be fair uh, in my career to ignore all sexist remarks. And sometimes men who do the interventions, I remember one guy, because I went open um, open space, and one guy it was, he did a, yeah, he explained a very hard, uh, hard word or something like that about myself. And the guy interrupted the guy. It is another guy who interrupted. So he said, oh, how you speak to Norway? So me, I was behind my laptop. I said, oh, this guy is very hard. And when my colleague, is a man colleague, he said, how, how you speak to Norway? Respect her. I said, oh, great. It's not me who defend myself. It was a man who speak to another, another man that is not respect me. And that mm -hmm. is very important. That is why I explained to you at the beginning, says it changed. The mindset change is a tech sector. More and more men are implicated to protect women, to promote women in this area because the area that is not our gender, we do our um, professionalism. That it is my first, it is a challenge. And there's a challenge to be fair, it is what I explained before, it was my self-confidence. So work on myself about, okay, I am a not professional, to speak up and to take the force and to sit at the table. So, and how, how I manage that, I met other women, to be fair, but not other women in tech sector, other women in other sector to say, okay, to open my mind because in this area, I realized when I discussed with other women that it is very hard where I work um, but me, I have not the consciousness about that. And then it is, okay, discuss with them how I can change my positions, how I can be more self-confidence, how I can work on myself to, to be more respected and to have no remarks. So I do this, some exercise to be fair, and I, like, I have a mentor, so, okay. And after that, to be fair, anybody give me any sexist remarks because my... Um, area and how I was, it is okay, impossible with not when to do anything. So yeah, but it's a challenge to be fair, but uh, we should keep smile also and not to be aggressive. That it is sometimes an issue to some women, it is to turn on the aggressivity and that is not the right solution to be fair. It is okay, keep calm. And that is hard because in your body, you are not calm. But uh, you should keep calm and explain people and use a humor sometimes. So that is fun. Now it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> but you do raise a brilliant point there. I, I think a lot of us, we, lo we try to voice our issues and concern, um, but we don't try to involve men. What you said there, engaging men, that mm. would solve about... 50, if not 90% of our problem, if men are involved, then it's easier for us to, to go ahead with our, you know, with uh, to solve our problems and issues that we have, that we face as a woman. But when men are not involved, men are helping in a way to like continue these issues and problems through their attitude or through behavior, whatever it is that they're doing. So you do raise a brilliant point there, engaging men, it's very, very crucial. Mm. Very important. Yes. So I think the other question um, would probably sort of uh, 
align with the question that you just answered. Uh, do you have any advice for uh, young women or girls who are planning to pursue field of um, technology? Yeah, if I have some advice, uh, as I explained a little before, it is um, find some mentors, to be fair, not only in tech area, but in different area, because it will open your mind. And it means also take time to do your network. Mm. Because many times women, we do our job, we do very lovely our job, 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 and we are a perfect lady, okay? Yes. But uh, sometimes we forget to do our network. And what is very important when you work, it is your network and your connection. So you have to take time to do it. I know it's very hard, especially when you become a parent, to be fair, and a mother. But um, yes, it will be it will be very important. And what I can do advice, it is be bold. Be bold. Boldness is very important. Don't think uh, you can't pursue your dream, but work on your dream. So me, I'm waiting uh, more than 15 years because it is 18 years now I work to create my own company because I need this time and it was possible to create it before, to be fair, but uh, I don't have all elements which I would like to have and all knowledge which I have now to propose a real good advice to my customer and a good services, very important for me. So yes, do your network and work for your dream. So it means be bold. Of course. And I think the other thing I would also add to it is um, my, one of my relative, when I, when I was in a time of distraught I was trying to find a job and um, I was I, I, I did not have any luck trying to find a job and one of my relatives my aunt she basically told me that a lot of women we underestimate ourselves when there is a job opening we we know you know we we when we read through the qualifications what your requirements are we fit the qualifications but we still don't apply because we think that we're not enough whereas men who are underqualified, apply for the job and they get the job. So I think it's important for women, even if it's in tech sector and, and, and if you're, even if you're scared, oh, what if I don't get the job? Maybe I'm not qualified. If you have the qualification, by all means, you have to pursue the job, go after the job, apply it. Because that's the reason why we undervalue ourselves that mm -hmm. hurts our confidence. That, that 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 has a you know that has a that has a chain reaction to then everything then you don't have a job then this and that so I think it's better for women us to like sort of also apply for jobs especially in tech field where there's a you know competition because there's so many men applying and then you look at you need this qualification that qualification and you feel like you don't have it I think this is where women need to apply and go for it I'm completely agree with you apply what, even if you don't have the old qualification, apply for it. And you will see, there's no risk to be fair. So apply. Yeah, if you so. get selected, that's good. If not, that's fine. You can go and apply another job. That's not end of the world. So exactly. Do it. exactly. And don't forget also to reclaim your own value. No yes. underestimate our value to be fair. I remember uh, one guy in contact me in LinkedIn one year ago, fair. And he asked me to have a job as a business developer in Europe, in energy area. So very lovely to be fair, to be contacted directly. It was an American company. And he asked me, okay, what is your salary expectations? I said, okay, uh, what I can explain? Okay, uh, and I write, to be fair, I said, okay, I would like that. And when I wrote it, to be fair, I said, he will never contact me again, never. The guy, he said, okay, no problem. When can we, when we can do the call? I said, really? <laughs> that is the <laughs> value in the market? So I realized what is exactly my value on the market. 
So I do the whole distribution. So I discuss with also my future managers, the N plus two, and if anything. And then we have only two at the end, me and a man. And, but me, I am an external uh, person and the other person was the internal, internal person. And the HR told me, okay, Miss uh, Germain, um, I don't uh, take your, uh, you, okay, for this role because we decided due to financial decisions to take someone from the internal area. And not due to my expertise and my salary is not because this guy, you know, already is on company and it will be faster for him to take some business and something like that. And he told me, we keep your CV, me, Germain. Yeah, keep my CV. It's okay. Don't worry. But I realized that I can put a value what the pay I received already. But I said, no, I will try to do it. And then say, okay, we can speak. Okay. Okay. Let's <laughs> So never underestimate your value, never. So you think you have a value in expertise and something, do it in speak up. Yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you for that, uh, that motivational uh, example that you've had. Uh, now we'd like to move on to the last two questions that I have because mm -hmm. you're in the field of technology, NFT. Yeah. Um, so the, these last two questions are related to that. Um, the first question is about, um, as most now as, we, as we're getting technologically advanced, a lot of us living our life online, everything is online these days. And um, what do you think this implies for human rights and gender equality in the digital space? Because as what I am aware of, we do not have a universal, we may have universal human rights law, but we don't have universal digital human rights law. So, so what, what do you think is going to happen here? And uh, how do we regulate crimes that happen um, against maybe women or girls in, in digital space, you know, against human rights? How, what do you think is the solution to this? It is a massive question, TG3. I will try to, to give you <laughs> and to share with you my visions to be fair. Okay. First of all, the digital world, it is a space area. Okay. So the law is not too much different than in our current world, so in the normal world, if I can say that. So if you have a different avatar, a different area, and you have um, sexist or abusive uh, area, you have law or cyber cyber uh, assessment, assessment, to be fair, is the same. We have already some law to protect yourself. Uh, in a, the huge difficulty today in the digital world, and because we discussed, I think, about the metaverse and all things around that, but, well, but it was the same in Second Life. I don't know if you know uh, this game, uh, Second Life, but it is our life in the digital world. And you can meet people, you can discuss with them, you can take a coffee with them in the digital area and do something. How we can sometimes work on the human rights and especially gender equity, it is, from my point of view, huh, it is to have more diverse team in coding and in software because me also, we are gender bias. We are biased, not only gender, but plenty bias, to be fair. So, but if you stay on the uh, uh, coding team who are more or less the same, okay, mm -hmm. for example, only white people, or only black people, or only Asian people, you don't have the universal visions, as you mentioned uh, about human rights. So for me, it's very important that for people who work in digital world and especially people who develop platforms, to be fair, to have diverse team. So it means, it means the CEO of the company is a guy or woman, okay, who are very open mind and to accept the diverse city, to be fair, because what is um, okay for you in your country Maybe it's not accepted in other country. 
but you see, okay, what is important is that it is event. So it is something like that. And I don't know if tomorrow we will regulate too much uh, this area. It is a huge challenge, uh, but uh, you should remind us that the internet exists only since more 30 years. Yeah. So it's not a many time internet exists to be fair. So before our human rights uh, laws, so our big international human rights, there's many, many things which happen. So I think it will take time um, to regulate correctly and to avoid abuse, to avoid also uh, crime uh, actions, to be fair. So it's a big challenge, but I think Step by step, it is uh, where more and more people and more and more research where we speak about ethics. Ethics in the digital world, what we want to do. Because you can do it with technology today, you can, and especially in digital world, you can do all things you want. Mm -hmm. All things. Yes. But at the end, it is why we develop that. Why we develop this solution this platform for what for divert is it divert people so just to give them an opportunity to to relax them uh, it is to help them to learn something uh, it is only to just see uh, visions or to see cats who are playing okay uh, personally I'm not sure it will be very nice to see so many videos to be fair of cats or dogs while at the same time, we can use this money to help people to learn something, to be more free and to invest sorry, the money. But at the same time, you can use technology to do uh, some actions to reduce inequalities, to reduce poverty, to reduce um, technical uh, literacy gap, because we have a real difficulty today, even if we are young, Sometimes we learn that young people and young generations, they use technology. They use networks, they use platform, but they don't understand what is happening behind. So we, for me, yes, digital world is a big challenge. Many things around human rights, but at the same time, we are more and more people who work on ethics, who work on that. So I hope before I pass away, <laughs> <laughs> to see something good to be fair in this area and to reduce the yes, cyber assessment and many things around that. But again, it's not possible to do it on the Okay, now it's a uh, sort of regulations. No, it's take time. So it's change our mindset about, okay, how we integrate digital world, how we integrate in avatar, in the law, how we um, integrate this whole economy in the business. And that it takes time. Yeah, you're you're one hundred percent absolutely correct. Um, what you said there, for the universal, you know, declaration of human rights to be to be accepted and 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 to be in place and drafted legally, it, there were so many events that happened that defined those laws. So you're absolutely right. It's it were, it's only been thirty something years since the internet you know, yeah. the start of the internet and, and the virtual world that we're living in. So absolutely, it's going to take some time. Uh, probably, I don't know, a few generations down our line, they'll probably have the laws, hopefully. Uh, but thank you for such a comprehensive answer. I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to ask you another question, though. Uh, so this is to do with NFT. NFT has become such a huge uh, topic these days. Uh, people yeah. are buying NFTs, just people who do not think twice to get their maybe teeth cleaned up, or it, I mean, wouldn't think twice to get an, buy NFT, but they wouldn't go do their teeth cleaned up, you know, like something personal hygiene, they wouldn't do that, but they would spend tons of money buying NFT. I've had friends like that who, who wouldn't pay their month's rent, but they're buying NFTs. So it's kind of scary. You can see how people are thinking about NFT. And this brings me to the question that celebrities are using NFTs, um, of course, as a means of um, uh, as a means of their 
uh, extra avenues to earn um, their incomes. But also there's been a lot of uh, otherwise in the news about celebrities such as uh, retired boxer uh, uh, Floyd Mayweather, how he profited selling NFTs, which which happened to be uh, not much of a value and uh, people were angry about it there was a big thing in the internet about it what do you have to say about nft like are they are they just fad or are they here to stay um or or, or is it just i don't know is it like bitcoin it's gonna be uh, highs and lows what do you say about nfts uh it's another good, good question to be fair to Jesuit. so um, uh, first of all, for me, NFT, we should remind that it is based on blockchain technology. Okay. Okay. So that is very important to understand what is exactly. And we create also uh, NFT. It is a proof of thing that this product, you have, the pro you have the property of this product. And this product, it can be physical and it can be digital. Okay. So that is something I would like to highlight. But for me, in your concrete line, today many people speak about NFT. It is a new trend. Ah, oh, I will do an NFT, I will do that, I will do that. Oh, I have to pay some fees because it is based on Ethereum. So you can you do use a blockchain technology to, to have an NFT, to be fair. So so sometimes I think people don't understand what is blockchain technology, but that it is another question. And <laughs> For me, to be fair, NFT is a huge opportunity for all of us, okay? And especially for artists, because it increases for their possibilities for artists to touch more people without pay intermediaries, without gallery. So to have a direct access to people that can buy their own art. And I'll give you an example. Um, I have a friend, he's a photographer. So it is a uh, 40 years now, it is a photographer. So, uh, yeah, he's an amazing guy, to be fair. The name is Gaël Dupré. And he did also many actions for uh, women's empowerment, uh, but also for Africa. So many different projects around photo. Okay, it is an artist. At the beginning, um, it is a job, he go to the gallery and mean many things and yes, some customer, okay, COVID-19. Impossible to do anything for him, impossible. So he had to find solutions uh, to be more recognized and to, to touch people. So, but it was already in the blockchain area to be fair because the certificate uh, we receive already on blockchain. So, and he, he discovered more NFT, so two years ago, okay? And now he has the possibility to sell his photo on digital area and physical area. So that it is a situation, many people think NFT, it is only for great people or very important people. No, it's very for everybody. So what you do now, so when you, go, you, you buy his NFT, okay? You have also the physical product at home. So it's not only digital, okay? So you have the NFT and you have the digital, you have the physical product and you can buy also physical product. So for me, NFT, we have the beginning of NFT for art and in artist area, for me, it's a massive thing. It is open the mind, we have plenty of opportunity and there's amazing artists also in digital art, there's amazing artists because to deploy a digital art, you should have knowledge on coding. You should know AI, you should know many things. So it's very artist people to be fair. And my vision is what I mentioned, NFT, it is a digital Amazonia of possibilities. And as many things and many, trend, many new trends or many new innovations, at the beginning, there are plenty, ah, we will earn plenty money and plenty money. It's just amazing and do some trend. And at the end, people use this trend to abuse uh, people and to earn money, as you mentioned. That is bad. Uh, and for me, it's not the visions um, I support about NFT. 
but it is the beginning, you know. So many people think it is that we earn plenty money, and something like that, uh, without uh, working a lot. Uh, myself, to be fair, when I see some NFT, sometimes it is only pixel uh, whale on pixel. I say, okay, uh, for me, it doesn't matter, to be fair. But I have a very impressive artist in this area. And I'm pretty convinced in the future we have more people, real artists in this area than today. Today it is about euphoria. Oh, we will do that and we earn money. No, 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 guys. It's the beginning. You will see in the future in five years. I'm pretty convinced that we have less people, to be fair, in this mm -hmm. art. In the same time, for some company, it is a mean to create their own community. So especially in Nixtory. So if you take a LVMH or if you take Joe, if you take a Nike, for example, or Adidas, for many big company and many brands, they go to the metaverse and they sell an NFT product. Okay. Oh. It is a mean for them to keep their customer, to oh. carry on to have their own community. Why you will buy a product 100 euro? Why? Because you have exactly more or less the same in the same product, more or less, but it's cheaper. Ah, ah, you have your NFT. Okay, I have that. Okay, so it can create a relation, so keep the relation with the customer. So it means many things around that. And me, from my visions about that, also. In the metaverse, my vision is in the metaverse tomorrow, people can create their own product, okay? It, mm -hmm. Even if, for example, you want to choose a specific choose and it doesn't exist in the real world, mm -hmm. you can create it. And mm -hmm. then, because with your avatar, you go in different area and people say, well, like exactly the same shoes, but maybe you will create your shoes. At the end, it's a physical world. So it can be also an opportunity to start before the launching of the new product, to start if there is a recognition, if people like it or not. So then you, so at the beginning you create an NFT and then you validate, and then you will maybe sell the NFT to a company for the production and you, you will have some revenue due to that. But it will take time. That is my personal vision. I don't, uh, I don't like personally the huge uh, people, you know, ah, we do NFT to earn many money in few time and I abuse some people. That it is because it is the beginning to be fair. I think, I think. Because yeah, I think right now the younger generation, they only care about fast money. They don't yeah. care where they're making money, how they're making money, it's fast money. And if you see the stats, uh, especially men there are less graduating men and for the first time in the history we have more women graduating with degrees so these men so what do they do they they kind of invest in nfts so i think it's a fast way of earning like you said um but what you've mentioned there it looks like it's going to stay here for a long time and i did not know yeah. that uh, brands use it in the, as a way to keep the relationship with customer. I had no idea. So that was a very uh, informative uh, uh, yeah. information from your side. But, but from what you said that, do you think it's going to stay here for a long time? Yeah, yeah, of course. For me, it is evolution all sort of the time. You, you should remind you, um, before we have papers only mean to promote a product, it is between people, you and me, because I see you and something. And then we have paper, okay? And then we have promotion on paper. And then we have the video. And so after that, we see the promotion on TV. And now we have internet. So now we have promotion in internet. And tomorrow, and now we have a metaverse and other thing around the gaming. And we have more and more promotion in this area or something. So it's not something, my problem is not something we stop in the future. It was another mean to promote our product. It is another mean, Metaverse, another mean to promote our product, NFT, another mean to have some product also, and to recognize that this product is my product. Okay, it is a digital art, 
but it is a very beautiful digital art. It is the same for music. At the, mu at the beginning, music, it is not at the beginning, but uh, we have some CD. How many people now have CD at home? How many? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure there are plenty. <laughs> I, I don't think so a lot of people have. So, and now we, all of us, we listen digital music. So why it will be the different with um, art? So before you, you buy a pen, a physical pen, and you go to see a painter, okay? But maybe tomorrow we'll see a guy who did exactly the same but in digital world and you have your own uh, paint, but in the digital world. So for me, all thing around metaverse, NFT, it will, it will stay for a long time. And in maybe in 30 years, NFT, it is a basic thing than the paper today. So, and I hope it will go in this area to be fair. But yes, it would be for me. It is here for the long term. So if you like to be with the creative people, generally, and if you are in innovation, you are with people. But as you said, um, we have to educate people also in the same time, just to explain them what does it mean also, and it's not fast money. It should mm -hmm. be, and in the same time, it is ethics. So some people that we abuse about other people, unfortunately, is the reality, but it is al already the reality in the physical world, in the real world. So yeah, but educate people about why you want to do that, why you are going that. And don't think you will earn money very fast, but uh, because uh, it takes time to be recognized. Right. Now that you talked about how NFT is going to stay here for a long time, I've been thinking maybe I should invest in NFT. Maybe I should. <laughs> but it's, it's the same. It is, there's plenty of artists. Me, I love the art, to be fair. Um, I think art gives us emotion. And that's why I love tech, because it gives you many opportunities to, to explain your emotion in another way. Mm -hmm. So, and what we research, all of us in tech sector, in care sector, we research emotion. So for me, uh, you will find many uh, artists today on NFT area, plenty to be fair. Yeah, there are also plenty of bullshit. Okay, so <laughs> I'm very direct, but it is a reality. <laughs> but uh, it is what it is. Exactly. Um, but at the same time, they are amazing artists, amazing artists and uh, artists who are very engaged and for who their ambitions, it is not earn many money. It is just share with the world our, their visions about the world and have an impact about that. And personally, I have two friends who are artists and they are an NFT and their vision of the world is very inspired, very, very, and they work for a human supplement, not only for women, but for human supplement. And that's for, for that, to be fair, I love. I love this area because uh, it is an opportunity for them to, to increase uh, their voice, to be fair, and to be more recognized in the future. So yes, for me, NFT is very lovely. Uh -huh. That is such a beautiful thing to hear. Um, I feel like we we live in so much in a digital world these days. Um, you know, you don't get to hear things like this often uh, about, say, an artist, yes, you see their work, but you don't hear about how much they're involved and what vision and motto they have because you're so immersed in digital world these days. It's a lovely thing to hear that people still are out there with such um, humanitarian perspective yeah. an attitude and this brings us to end of our interview uh, thank you so much for your time Ms. Nolwen and for departing your experience and your your challenges and struggles as you've come this uh, 18 years of journey mm -hmm. uh, I hope this is going to inspire our audience um, thank you so much uh, for for your time, basically, yes. No, but thank you for you. And if people is, I would like to be connected with me, 
they should not hesitate to contact me on LinkedIn or request from you my contact details. It's still a good, good and great pleasure to be connected with a woman and help them um, to have more tech in uh, women in tech and women in STEAM. So science, technology, engineering, art and math. So yes, so don't hesitate to contact me. It's still a pleasure. Yes, for anyone who would like to contact her, uh, you can easily find Miss Nolan's uh, LinkedIn profile. Um, and um, I'm sure the details will be provided by the um, ITU team. But we'd also like to thank um, ITU, uh, NICC, and the Office of the uh, and the Office of the Human Secretary General's Envoy in Youth for this wonderful opportunity. Uh, to interview uh, Ms. Nowen and uh, for this Women in Tech uh, talking series. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. You too. Thank you.